So I've had quite the crazy day. As I was walking home, I, I'm coming down the pier and I see the through hall where the high water pump discharges and I notice that it is gushing water out. And that's the high water pump, which means that the water's gotten up to it. So I run home, run down the pier, come inside, and water's just gushing right into it. Uh, it was horrible. So, a very important life lesson that I was told as soon as I bought the boat was never ever leave the shore pressure connected. And I cannot emphasize how important that is right now after this happened. So, Maddie was getting a shower in the morning and it's more comfortable getting a shower city pressure rather than the boat pressure because there's just more water pressure. So, I got up in the morning and I went outside, hooked up the city pressure to the boat and we had shore pressure. So if Maddie got a really nice shower, I waited. That way I could most certainly turn it off before I went to work and I apparently forgot to turn it off. So I went to work and at some point during the day a hose slipped off the water heater and it just started gushing in water at full blast because there was city pressure hooked up and no stopping it. So it was just pouring water in. So the bilge filled up all the way to the floorboards and the way the boat's set up, uh, there's the main bilge in the back and water will fill that one up. Ideally it'll, you know, we'd catch it, turn on the bilge pump, pump it out with the manual bilge pump, whatever. But we weren't here, so we didn't do any of those things. So the water filled up that bilge, flowed into the next compartment, and then flowed into the battery compartment, and then flowed over the next bulkhead to finally reach the high water pump. So I set it up that way, that way uh, the high water pump lives in a very nice clean little compartment and the only way water would get to it is if there's a ton of water in the boat and then it turns on to keep you afloat and keep you going because it's flowing a ridiculous amount of water at a uh, thousand gallons per minute or, sorry a thousand gallons per hour so it flows plenty of water uh, as noted by seeing it gush out the side of the boat when I was running home so I come in everything's flooded this is really sad news why don't we just have a cute adorable corgi that you can look at well, I'll explain what happened. The motor is completely underwater. All the batteries are underwater. Everything is completely soaked and flooded. And it's just a matter of starting to pump everything out. So the really good side to this was it was a great test, in a way, sort of, for if things go horribly wrong while at sea. So I first quick disconnected the city pressure which stopped the boat from sinking because now the source of water inflow was stopped, which I should have done before I went to work in the morning. And then, uh, then we got to test out how quickly the new bilge pump I put in can flow. So I put in one of the old Edson bronze behemoths uh, that flows one gallon per stroke. And by golly, in 15 minutes of leisurely pumping, not scared, oh crap, I'm sinking pumping, we had the bilge dry. So, that's kind of cool to know. I didn't know how quickly I could drain my bilge before that. Now I do. There's an upside to that. And then the other upside is the bilge is spotless now because it's been flushed with a lot of water all day long. So, now we're here and we have all the floorboards up. And we're just waiting for it to dry off. Uh, one of my neighbors lent me a fan. Uh, so I have it blowing in the bilges to keep just airflow to keep everything drying out. Uh, my biggest concern is rot forming in the wood under the hall or under the floorboards. Uh, so I got everything open and dried out. We drained it all out with the bilge pump and then I took a shop vac and just got every last little bit of water I could get out of there. Uh, and then I sprayed WD-40 over all the terminals to all the batteries. That way, hopefully, they don't corrode horribly. Uh, the house bank was powering the electric bilge pump during the whole fiasco, and you can see signs of uh, electrolytic corrosion or galvanic corrosion happening 
uh, crossing from the positive to the negative poles. There's a gray streak running across the batteries. The motor bank, on the other hand, uh, looks like it's been spared because the motor was off because we weren't going anywhere. So, good news there. Uh, I did test the electric motor and yeah, it's an electric motor and it was completely submerged, luckily with tap water, but still not so good. Uh, it doesn't run at the moment, so I need to see is it just a little tiny connection that's wet and corroded or is it something more serious. So we will find out shortly how this goes. Uh, but yeah, everything else seems to be pretty, pretty drained out. Uh, the limber holes worked well, so some of the compartments that I didn't really know if they could drain and was worried that they were just collecting water for years and years, because it's a 50 year old boat, so who knows what's lurking down there. Uh, they drained out completely, and I know they were full because they had to be filled to fill out the next compartment. So that was educational, and uh, yeah, so I got home at around like three o'clock and it's now 8 30 and we're still just waiting for things to dry out to make the day even more interesting after i get the boat all pumped out and dried up i'm on the pier walking around with morty because there's no floor in the boat at the moment so why be in the boat so i'm walking around and i see this other boat broadside and on my bow so I run over to see what's going on. Do they need help? Do they want to not be smacked into my bow and get the gnome a little better? And it turns out they're trying to dock. They wanted to dock back, stern into the wind, which uh, it's blowing really hard today. So that's maybe not the best direction to dock your sailboat, especially when it's a chartered sailboat and you aren't familiar with it and don't really know what you're doing. And I don't mean to say that because they're charterers, they don't know what they're doing on the sailboat, but because when I went over to the slip that they were heading to and offered to help tie them up and give them a hand, that way they, you know, can get in safely because it's blowing like stink and, you know, it's getting late and, you know, it's nice to help out people. <laughs> Like, it's really annoying when you see someone struggling to get into a slip and a bunch of people just standing around watching, right? Yes, it can be entertaining to watch, but they're having trouble. So help them out, grab a line, do anything. Just don't just stand there and stare. That just makes them scared and on edge and then more things happen. It's just, it's not nice. So anyway, I go over to help them out and I ask them to, you know, toss me a dock line. And uh, one of the people on the boat picks up a fender. And at first I thought he was just going to, you know, put the fender between the boat and the pier or something because, you know, it's blowing really hard and they were going to smack into the pier. And then I realized that, no, he thought that fender was a dock line because it had a rope on it. So luckily one of them on the boat of six, uh, seemed to know what he was doing, jumped off the boat and then started giving orders from the pier and they got the boat in, we got some lines tossed and then everything got tied off and they were fine. Uh, but until then it, it was rather interesting to watch and no damage to our boat, hopefully no damage to their boat. We have a 65 pound mantis anchor hanging out at the front of the bow. so. I wasn't really concerned about them hurting my boat because it's a really old, solid boat. I was worried about them ripping a hole in the uh, modern, kind of flimsy charter sailboat that they were on. So, yes, it's been quite the interesting day today. <laughs> hopefully, this is the end of all the drama for the day. And hopefully, tomorrow goes much smoother. We shall see. Thanks so much for watching and we hope that you will like this video and subscribe to our channel for uh, updates on our adventures. And when you subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell. That way you'll get notifications as soon as the next video is uploaded. Thank you so much.